Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to cover a concept that I covered in Minecraft Survival Guide Season 1, but we never really saw through to its full potential. We've all been to the end at this point, or at least hopefully you have if you've been following along with this series. Some people apparently never bother fighting the Ender Dragon and don't really want to do the whole end thing, but personally, I think it's an integral part of the Minecraft experience, and one once you get to the end and have fought the dragon, it opens up a gateway to the Outer End Islands. But what if I told you that we can control where those gateways end up? We can actually turn that into something that allows us to generate our own gateway out in the void, and from there you can do all sorts of stuff with it. If nothing else, it gives you a gateway directly into the void which you can use to start all kinds of building projects which you can instantly return to. I think one of the major problems with the end as it exists in the current version of Minecraft, and who knows if they have plans to update that in future, but it doesn't have anything like nether portals. It doesn't have anything that allows you to fast travel out to different areas of the Outer End Islands. Once you've explored out there, you have to find your way back if you want to make an end base. But the end gateways that teleport you out from the Central Islands to the Outer Islands are basically the only fast travel mechanism that exists in the end. It's either a two-way trip between two of those gateways, or it's a one-way trip back from further out in the Central End Islands. And so what I want to do today is show you how you can manipulate those gateways using a little bit of mathematics and some common sense. We'll need a little bit of supplies before that though, and I've started gathering some end crystals. I have a bunch of eyes of ender, just crafted those together with the ender pearls we've been farming, and some blaze rods. And down here in my storage system, I have a decent supply, here we go, of ghast tears. And I've been farming those just by flying around the nether and shooting at ghasts, and I wanted to share with you a really easy way of getting a whole bunch of ghast tears if you just want them by the handful. If you're not looking to farm them outright, you just want to get hold of a decent amount of them in the meantime so that you can craft yourself a bunch more end crystals. First of all, fly around the nether a little bit until you have found a soul sand valley. Your spawn might be a soul sand valley or it might be a little bit further afield, but sooner or later you're going to encounter one. And the only things that will spawn here are skeletons and ghasts. For best effects, you probably want to find a soul sand valley that doesn't have too many other biomes surrounding surrounding it. Like right here I have a decent stretch of soul sand valley but there's also nether wastes and crimson forest and as you can see an absolute ton of mobs end up spawning around here when I leave the soul sand valley because the game wants to fill up the mob camp with those. Eventually though as you're flying around a soul sand valley you will occasionally encounter the telltale whimpering of a ghast and there are a couple of different ways to deal with them and get hold of a decent amount of ghast loot drops, one of which is to fly directly into them and kill them with your looting sword. But that's not always super convenient, ghasts can be a little bit tricky, so what you want to do is hold your bow in your offhand and shoot at them while holding your looting sword in your main hand, and that will actually allow you to use the looting effect from the sword while still shooting them with a bow. Since you're not attacking with a bow by holding down left click, use right click instead, you can actually apply the looting effect of the sword to the attack action of the bow. This is kind of an unintended side effect of having looting in your main hand, but it does get you a decent amount of ghast tears. I just killed two of them, I maybe had one in my inventory, but I got five out of that from just two ghast kills. Unfortunately, the drops from one of those went in the lava, so that's the other thing to remember is try and make sure that you can either dive down and get the ghast tears, or that you're fighting the ghasts over a decent landmass. Either way, if all you wanted to do is shoot down a couple of ghasts to get enough ghast tears for some end crystals, then you probably only need need to kill one or two ghasts before you get all the ghast tears you will need. And let's take a quick look, I've got six ghast tears in my inventory right now, and now I have nine, there you go. So we definitely got more than the average ghast tears from that, proving that the looting method does work. It used to be that you could hold the looting sword in your offhand and the bow in your main hand and do it that way, that seems to have been patched out, but you can still shoot a bow from your offhand, so that method actually does work out pretty well in the end. And don't worry, we have plenty of time in the future of this series to look at stuff like ghast farms. But there you go, we've got another three ghast tears from that one. I think uh, I probably have enough for some more Eyes of Ender back at home, but we are definitely looking at a healthy number of End Crystals to respawn the dragon a bunch of times, because that is what we're going to need to do. Before we get prepared, let's fly out to the Stronghold and take a look at the End. Let's take a look at the concept that we're dealing with here, because we've already generated a couple of End Gateways around our central island here, and we want to make sure that we're generating new ones for this trick to work. In fact, looking
looking at it from up here, we've only generated two end gateways in this world. We've only fought the dragon twice. The initial fight which led to this portal over here, and then the second fight which generated that portal over there. Each time you defeat the ender dragon, it will generate a new gateway once the dragon is killed, and it will generate them in a ring around the island, perfectly spaced out, with 20 gateways in total. Once you've killed the dragon 20 times, no more gateways are going to generate. So if you're going to do this in your world, it's important that you do this sooner rather than later, before you fought the dragon a whole bunch of times and some of these opportunities are lost to you. Furthermore, while this can be done with any of the 20 gateways, the ones which are easiest to manipulate are the ones in the direct cardinal directions from the center of this bedrock return portal, which incidentally is at the exact 0, 0 coordinate in the center of the end dimension. So if we go this way, for example, there is going to be one... Oh, hello, I've just angered an enderman. <laughs> so as I was saying, there will be one end gateway that spawns over there directly to the east. There will be one that spawns directly north, basically right between those two pillars. Likewise, there'll be one directly south over there and one directly west, which as we saw from up there, we haven't actually generated any of the gateways at the four cardinal directions yet. The two we've generated are slightly off from those coordinates. There is one directly to the right of the eastern location where a gateway will spawn, and there is one to the right of the northern location, meaning that, yeah, we can we can do this pretty easily. I think we might be able to do this with all four gateways if we get lucky with where the gateways generate, because it is random which direction it chooses to generate them each time, so chances are we might end up trying to fight the dragon a bunch of times and not get a gateway to generate where we want it to. But in order to set this up, I need to return to the overworld so we can gather a bunch of materials, because this is going to take some building and it's also going to take a bit of demolition. I'm going to come back to my storage system over here and I'm going to grab any end stone blocks that I have. We'll probably get a lot of end stone from this anyway, but it's always good to start out with a few blocks of it. And I also need a lot of leaves. I'm going to use leaves for this, although other blocks will do, but ideally it works best with leaves because they aren't an end stone block. They're not native to the end and they're also technically a transparent block and they're also very easy to remove. So something like azalea leaves, since I have a decent amount of those, is going to work pretty well here. Maybe we'll use some mangrove leaves as well, as I've been gathering so many of those on my quest to get a decent amount of mangrove wood. But if you need to get a bunch of leaves in a hurry, you can either farm some trees yourself, just head out to your local forest and grab as much as you need. Mangrove roots might even work, although I'm not certain if they are spawnable. They're transparent, but they act a little bit more like a solid block, so curious. We'll have to do some experiments with that. So we're going to stash all of these leaves in a shulker box, maybe get a few more for good measure, and let's head back out to the end island to see which of these portals we can actually control. So the first one we're going to to set up for this is directly north. We're going to fly through this gateway here, and then we're going to head to a very specific set of coordinates. Okay, here we are, and this is actually looking pretty promising. So to give you a bit of an explanation of how those gateways work, whenever you generate one around the central island, when you kill the dragon, it doesn't actually generate a gateway out here in the islands until you go through that gateway portal, the block at the center of it. You either go through using an ender pearl or you use the trapdoor trick, you crawl through, you fly through if you have wings at the time, whatever. Only then does the game search for a location to put the exit portal, the portal that's actually going to send you out here to the islands where there are chorus fruit and end cities and all the rest of it. And it does that by drawing a straight line from the center of the world, from that zero, zero coordinate where the bedrock portal is, through the exit gateway that you use to leave the central island and all the way out to the outer islands. The line it draws is exactly 1,024 blocks long and it's looking for patches of endstone in the chunk where that line ends. So if we come out 1,024 blocks on the Z axis, that's the third number there in our coordinates, you will see that we're at negative 1,024. We're 1,024 blocks north of the center of the world, and we're off by 32 on the X axis because 1,024, zero, which is the center line between the east and west directions, is actually right here. And it looks like, aside from the stuff that we have just built, there are actually no additional blocks in this chunk. Like if I turn on chunk borders like this, the chunk that we're in, the 1024 coordinate here, or I guess on the other side of the block over here, 
none of those actually have terrain blocks in. As far as endstone goes, they are completely blank. And that's going to be perfect for what we need to do here. So I'm actually going to remove this entire pathway that I just built out there. I'm going to remove that bridge. And together, we are going to build outwards into the void to a different set of coordinates, much closer to the end island. Not quite equidistant between the central island and the outer islands, but relatively far out. And we are going to do that using leaf blocks because they're not Spawnable because we can remove them nice and easily once we're done, but because the game will check for other blocks in the chunks leading up to that, and then it will search back along there to find the closest endstone block to the central point. I'll explain a little bit later why it does that, because that actually makes a lot of sense for where it targets terrain in order to place one of those end gateways, but for right now we just have a lot of building to do, and we're going to be doing this four times, so I can explain later on once we've got one example in place. In terms of Y coordinate, the lowest we can actually do this is at Y30, so I'm going to be placing leaf blocks along here, and we're actually going to have this at Y31 just to be on the safe side, but we're going to put two blocks on that center line between zero and negative zero, which is a weird concept mathematically, but it does seem to work, and then we're going to bridge outwards. Thankfully, we have Swift Sneak to do this. We're going to bridge outwards with a two block wide path of leaves. And we're going to do this until our Z coordinate is in the low 800s. And at that point, we should be able to set up a point where our new end gateway is going to generate. Okay, we are just about done here with our long path of leaves. It stops abruptly in the void over here, so I'm just going to get to the end and I'll show you the coordinates. We're actually into the high 700s on the negatives, of course, so we're at negative 784 and we are inside two separate chunks, which are basically the last chunks that we can use for this experiment before the game will think, okay, it's looking slightly too close to the central end end island and it will decide to go further out in that direction instead. But what we have here is a border of four separate chunks, which you can see thanks to the wireframes. I'm using the debug feature to enable chunk borders. That's F3 and G if you play on Java. And I am not certain whether this technique works on Bedrock Edition or not. It may be that Bedrock Edition calculates end gateway placements slightly differently. So once again, apologies to Bedrock players. I'm not certain if you can do this or not. But basically what we're going to do now is come out a couple more blocks over on each side, and I'm going to have to do the slightly precarious thing of putting down a shulker box in the end over the void. Yep, there we go. We got it back. Good. And we're going to come out a couple of blocks into each chunk, and we are going to be placing some end stone on each of those. We're going to do one there, one there, one there, and one there. Each of these blocks of end stone is inside of one of these chunks, and these are the chunks the game is going to be testing for a location for our end gateway portal. It'll generate hovering in the air above one of these ones. If I had to guess, probably the ones on the left-hand side, but that's just a hunch. And one of the most important things is that we don't remove our bridge of leaves yet. We can remove it once the gateway has generated, but not before, because the game is going to look for blocks between the 1024 coordinate and the 768 coordinate, and it's going to determine there isn't a valid spawning position for the gateway over there, but there are blocks there, so it must be kind of far inland. Let's search a little bit further, and the closest it will search is these two chunks that these two pieces of endstone are placed in, basically the chunks that begin with the 768 coordinate. So amazingly, now if we fight the dragon and the northmost portal on the island generates the one that's in the true north side of the island, then that is going to potentially generate a gateway over one of these four blocks when we travel through it. So for our next trick, we're going to travel back to the central end island, we're going to fight the dragon, and we're going to generate a bunch of gateways. It's been a while since we fought the dragon, but I have enough end crystals here for six dragon fights, and if we need more, we have the materials to go and make more. So hopefully <laughs> this should all go according to plan. If we don't get the north gateway, I'll keep generating gateways until we get some more. This also completely regenerates the obsidian towers that are around the arena, so the one that I've demolished is completely restored now. As is the Ender Dragon. All right, let's get up here, destroy these towers, and then we'll work on phase two. Bow skills are on point today. I think the dragon is on its way around and should hopefully come back down to perch for our second damage phase. Once we've got that done, I think the dragon should be taken care of. We'll have our first new gateway generated. And if we get the north one on the first try, I'll be so lucky. Whoa, okay, one more bow shot, the dragon should come into land. 
There we go, and that is dragon number one down. Let's see which gateway we end up getting, because it should generate once the dragon is dropping XP. There we go, we got one over there. That is kind of east-northeast, I guess. So not exactly the one we wanted, let's go again. That's fight number two, southwest gateway, again. Well, got killed that time. <laughs> See if I can make it back without running into any hoglins. <laughs> There's all my stuff. The only thing I lost was XP. The ender ender's right there. <laughs> Not a big deal. And I get my revenge. That's dragon fight number three. <laughs> north gateway, north gateway, north gateway, north gateway, north gateway, please. Wait, which one even was that? Oh, north northwest gateway. The one directly opposite that one, but sadly not the one that's gonna connect for us. <laughs> eh, no worries. Let's do fight number four. Mm, try not to die this time, 007. At this point, any of the cardinal directions will do. Thank you very much. <gasps> Is that, oh, that's north. That is directly north. Okay, okay, we have the gateway we wanted and it only took four dragon fights. <laughs> that's not too bad, actually. We're probably gonna have to do a lot more if we want the east, south, and west gateways as well, but I've almost recovered all the XP I had and now if we travel through this gateway, fingers crossed, it should take us to the platform that we marked out earlier in the episode. So I'm gonna pillar up using these mangrove roots I brought with me in the shulker box and it's time to put that to the test. We'll throw the ender pearl through and incredible. Oh, it was the left hand one. Amazing. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Anyway, we now have a custom spawned end gateway. This one ended up, I guess, around Y39. <laughs> Looking at the targeted block data there, Y39 out here in the void about 400 blocks away from where it should generate. And notably, that distance away from any larger landmass, which means this is a really efficient place to build a custom ender ender like the one we built off the end island. Obviously, we have to do the same trick with lava and water, create a cobblestone pillar down to void level and then work from there. But honestly, having this out in the middle of nowhere saves all of the bridging, all of the hassle, and you have a teleporter that takes you right to it, which is what I did in Survival Guide Season 1. I really like having these custom custom spawned gateways out here. And what I'm hoping to do later in this season, although I'm probably not going to manage it in today's episode, is to build some stuff around some of these. I basically want four outposts here in the void that are further away from the end islands where we can do a little bit of custom cool stuff. We can either build out here, we can set up some resource farms as long as they work in the end, we could set up a villager trading hall out here, anything like that. And it would be removed from the context of being in the overworld, it would be removed from any kind of natural terrain. You're effectively playing skyblock out here, creating all of the terrain yourself, but with a way of warping there now from the central island. And we're going to do that three more times so that we can have the east, south, and west gateways spawn exactly the same way. But just to check that this works both ways, I'm going to fly on back through this gateway, and there we go. <laughs> we have landed on the flat ground below the gateway that we came in through. The north gateway is ours, and we have customized its location. Now, one of the things that I think is hardest to believe about this is the fact that those gateways don't generate until you travel through them. So I'm going to try and generate one of the other three cardinal direction gateways without first setting up all of the leaves and endstone and everything else. And we'll see exactly how that works. But of course, that means fighting the dragon a few more times and hoping we get lucky with one of those four directions. So <laughs> I'll fight the dragon a couple more times and we'll see what comes of that. Well, in a fantastic stroke of luck, dragon fight number five has, I believe, given us the Western Gateway there. That one right there is actually on the zero axis Z-wise. So yeah, now that's that's basically right where we want it to be. So we're going to go and do the same thing. But first, I need to find the nearest gateway that's going to take us to those coordinates. Probably this one over here, or maybe, no, I think that one's closer. And you could do the same thing, mathematically speaking, with these ones, but you'd have to draw a straight line from the center of the portal all the way out 1,024 blocks on a diagonal, and the maths there is a lot harder to work out. I mean, it's a bit of basic trigonometry, but you know, for example, example, this gateway here has brought us out 850 blocks on the z-axis and 600 or so blocks on the x-axis, so you can you can more or less do the maths, but personally I just find it much easier manipulating the gateways that are on the straight lines. That way you don't need to worry about too much. But from here we need to head to the terrain that reaches 1024 on the negative x-axis, but zero on the z-axis, and there we should find the location for gateway portal number two, which is going to be among these islands over 
over here, I think. Now we are just passing over the negative z-axis there we go so 1024 is going to be roughly around there yeah it'd basically be on the opposite side of this chunk the opposite corner over there so it looks like this one doesn't have any terrain getting in the way either which is perfect the one thing we need to do is bridge out from one of the lower coordinates over there if we want it to be at a low enough y height but as you can see from the islands around us there is no sign of a gateway yet. Even though we've generated that westernmost gateway on the central island, it hasn't generated a location for it on these islands. And in the code, those are actually known as delayed end gateways. Now, if I glide on down here, we're at Y37. That seems roughly right. I think we'll probably set up our next portal somewhere down here. Oh, there's even a little underhang kind of section here where I think we can make a start. And we're going to bridge out, of course, until we hit that zero coordinate on the Z axis, so we're gonna go from about here all the way until we hit zero and negative zero like so, and then we're gonna start bridging eastwards back towards the central island. In the event that you need to fly back to the central island to get more resources, like I do because I've just ran out of leaves, it's potentially a bit disorienting to fly through the void like this. Even with your coordinates up, it can be difficult to tell whether you're tilting upwards or downwards, and you can go into third person to see your flight angle, but one of the ways I like to do it is by enabling that hitbox debug option with F3 and G just so you can see the lines a little bit and that gives you a better idea of your height in the chunk and those lines start moving a lot faster if you're traveling upwards or downwards at speed. So after a quick trip back to the overworld to get more leaves because I ran out even of the azalea ones we now have our second platform set up over here once again within that 768 coordinate we are above that we are at Y783, 782 roughly and once again, we don't have any solid terrain between us and negative 1024 on the x-axis, which starts right where I decided <laughs> that I needed to make sure I was on the chunk border. And there's a good reason for that. Yeah, 1024 is right here, basically. So this is the point at which we need to make sure that this too wide path is a too wide path and is straddling the chunk border. So I messed up with the leaves here. I'm probably just going to carve a bunch of them away with the hoe and have them fall into the void. There we go. We're all connected up. So... Let me explain a little bit more about what the gateway search is doing when it's looking for terrain and why it chooses those four blocks here over this massive island over here. These end islands can generate in a variety of different shapes and sizes. And it is not always the case that we're going to find lots of little dotty islands a thousand blocks out from the central island. Sometimes the game generates a landmass a little closer. But the way Mojang wants these portals to generate means that they typically generate on the edges of islands like this so a player can explore deeper into the central island and behind them is this giant ring of void. So let's take right here as an example. Our X coordinate right here at the tip of this island is 960 something or negative 960 something. So 1024 blocks in is closer to let's say about here, right? So when the game draws that thousand block line, it stops here at the 1024 block marker and says, okay, there's some valid terrain there. There is end stone there. I'm going to spawn a portal. Portal. But what if that's way inland? It's going to spawn the player in the middle of one of these land masses instead of on the edge of the island. So what the game does is it backtracks a little bit and it says, is there still terrain in the next chunk back from that? If the answer to that is yes, it continues searching until it finds the edge of the terrain. And then once it reaches a point where that check fails, when it cannot detect any more terrain behind that, it says, okay, this is clearly the edge of the island, we'll generate the gateway there. What we've just done is tell the game that there is terrain as far up as 1024 blocks, but it's not valid spawning space for an end gateway because it doesn't contain any end stone. Once the game recognizes that, it's going to search back a few chunks at a time looking for valid places to spawn up to that final coordinate of 768, which over there... <laughs> That's where our four blocks of endstone are, basically at the closest coordinate they can be to that central island, and that is where the game realizes, wait, there's some endstone here, and that seems to be the edge of an island. So we're tricking the game into thinking that those four blocks of endstone out there in the void are the outer edge of one of these islands. Alternatively, if the game doesn't detect a spawnable block 
when it gets further back, once it gets to that 768 coordinate, it's going to start checking forwards from 1024. So it's actually going to search for a landmass further out. Because, of course, the game can generate a set of islands which might not have a, an edge around 1024. It might dip inwards like these kind of valleys in the terrain here do. And it will also decide to do that if it checks further back along this line of leaves and there's a chunk missing somewhere. If there is a 16 block long area where there aren't any blocks it's going to think okay that's where the terrain ends it hasn't found a valid place to spawn an end return gateway so it's going to look further ahead and is going to plant one over there on the island so this bridge has to be unbroken and it has to be two blocks wide because the game is searching along a chunk border it's searching basically either side of this dividing line and so if there are leaves on this side but not this side when the game checks on this half it's gonna think oh okay there's no more terrain here i should go check further out in the islands instead and now to prove that this all works we're gonna fly back to that western gateway on the central end island we're gonna activate it come through it and it's going to lead us to this azalea leaf platform this one right Right here is our gateway. We can't see the central portal from it because it's tucked behind that pillar, but this is the gateway we want to go through and let's fly on through. And there we go, we're on the Azalea Leaf platform and once again it's created the end gateway over here on the left hand side. And once again we can build whatever we want around this, so we can build a platform to land on, we can build, you know, any kind of base, we can build an ender ender, something technical, there's all sorts of options and once again we are pretty far away from any other landmass. In fact if I stand all the way back here you can just barely see the tip of that island over there with a 16 chunk render distance, so <laughs> we're pretty far away from civilization. But we're still not done because there are two more of these portals that I want to manipulate into spawning in roughly the same area out there in the void. And so we're going to travel to the other locations on the positive axes and we will see where we can trick the game into spawning a portal next. This is the eastern set of coordinates. Right here we're standing on 1024. That little group of blocks down there might actually be the only spawnable space in that chunk and it may even be down a little bit too low for that. So we're going to swoop down there and see if we can start our leaf platform from down there or over here on the island and we'll check that there's nothing else inside that chunk that could be a potential spawning spot for a delayed end gateway. Yep, these blocks right here are technically speaking within the chunk that it would look for so it could end up spawning a portal down here and I have a feeling that if I enable chunk borders right now yeah that little nubbin of land up there there's one or two blocks that might just be within the boundary so just for safety I'm going to take down this little chunk of land here which is a little bit terrifying because I have to break all of the blocks underneath me hit glide and fly upwards and then we're going to take out this nose of land that's sticking out the side here because this one block is inside of the chunk that starts at uh, x0 on that coordinate and that could ruin our day if we're trying to do this properly so i'm thinking we probably want to give this a little bit of a border just for safety and from my estimation the neighboring chunk doesn't seem to have any terrain in it either as long as we remove these blocks that i just placed we should be good to go there so we can start our little leaf platform here straddle this chunk border and bridge out until we hit the 780 coordinates again. Well, in the end, we got lucky. <laughs> in the end, sorry, I didn't mean that to be a pun, but it came out that way. So in the end, we got lucky. We ended up only having one smallish section of terrain here on the easternmost gateway on the eastern axis the, where we need to remove a decent chunk of this island in order to get rid of all of the terrain where it could generate an end gateway. I think that section down there just about falls within this chunk as well but anything further back than that is not going to matter all that much. So we can bridge out from this island to create our fourth gateway along that chunk border directly opposite us right there and going off into the distance. And then we just need to fight the Ender Dragon enough to generate the south and west portals and our mission here is complete. We will have four portals in the void 700 blocks out from the island instead of a thousand. <laughs> I think this block here of this island is just within that chunk as well and then those few blocks there so I'll take down this entire little hunk of terrain just in case. And it took a little bit of digging but we found a way down towards Y31 so once again we're going to drop all of our mangrove leaves here. Check that there are are no solid endstone blocks inside the chunk that the 1024 coordinate is in which should be the outer edge of this one right here 
Yep, looks like we're in the clear. Okay, let's make our bridge. And at last, our eastern gateway is all set up as well. So we need two more dragon fights, hopefully two more cardinal directions the east and south gateways will generate and we'll be all done here. And in the meantime, we can locate one of the return gateways like this one that's going to take us out to that central platform on the end island. So we have a nice quick way to get back, even though we haven't generated the eastern gateway yet. Well, I might as well head home to drop off these supplies and gather a few more of the end crystals so that we can do a few more dragon fights in quick succession here. But I think this has been a pretty successful attempt so far. With my current gas tier supplies, I had enough for 16 more crystals, so hopefully we'll get the eastern and southern gateways within four more dragon fights. Well, it happened again. And my bed is surrounded by pillagers when I wake up. And last time I came through here, there were a lot of mobs. So let's see how many of these I can get past. Yikes, the fireballs. <laughs> but most of them missed me. But as long as you don't die too close to the edge of the island, getting your stuff back from the dragon fight is not the biggest problem. And the dragon has the tiniest sliver of health that time. So let's see which one we get. Oh, a couple of love taps on the way back to the portal. But there it is. East or south, east or south, east or south. Oh, that is not quite south. And yes, I will have some levels back, thank you. <laughs> well, we got one more attempt, but then I think we'll have to do the rest of them another time because my bow is in need of repairs. <laughs> Honestly, me and the dragon have to stop meeting like this. Oh, and the blaze gauntlet doesn't get any easier. I'm <clears throat> just gonna pick this stuff up. Come down here and fight. Never lets you get the last hit in over the portal. Hey, never mind. <laughs> there it is. Once again, we are hoping for east or south gateways. Let's see what we end up getting. Oh, dang it. Southeast. <laughs> well, somewhere between the two. But anyway, we know that this system works. So all I need to do is run away, get a bunch more end crystals, respawn the dragon a few more times and we should be in business with all four of those cardinal direction gateways linked to a customized portal location. That's going to be super fun, but I think we're going to leave it there. Now you know the theory, time to put it into practice yourself in your own world. So let me know how that goes. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.